Hand cycling can be a dangerous activity. Please use this information at your own risk. I strongly recommend you consult a bike building professional or mechanic to verify what you're going to do to your hand cycle as well as to make sure that your bike is well maintained. With that out of the way, this video I will detail how or what parts I purchased or actually what parts I should say I will purchase or would purchase to build another front wheel drive electric assist hand cycle. This direct drive uh, motor that you could see mounted on the front wheel of my bike. Uh, this is the first build that I built um, back in April of 2020. Uh, has completely changed my life. I mean, it's, it's enabled me to go biking places that I never thought I'd be able to hand cycle again. I have had, you know, great memories and moments bonding with my son, biking through, you know, beautiful um, um, passes at, you know, six, seven, eight thousand feet. Um, uh, started sharing this with the community through Able Bodied. You can see one of our riders here. Uh, this is actually that first bike that I built with the front wheel drive hub motor. Uh, for those that are not aware, at Able Bodied, we offer uh, free hand cycling lessons to anybody who asks. Um, the goal of the program is to help reconnect the SCI community with the great outdoors. Um, we do this purely philanthropically. We don't ask for any money. All we ask is that um, you help spread the word and, you know, if interested, build your own bike. Uh, that's the purpose of this video is to kind of help tell you what I use to, what I would buy if I were to build another direct drive, uh, front wheel drive uh, hand cycle. So let's get into it. So here I have a spreadsheet. I'll link to it in the description of the video. It has all the different things that you would need to buy to build this bike. Uh, this particular set of, you know, I even have tools here for, for, for putting the bike together and uh, the e-bike kit sum up to about $3,400. Um, some of the stuff is optional, but I'll, I'll go through each line item. Uh, most important of which is this very first one, which is the motor kit. This is what you're going to be buying from ebike.ca. If you click on the price, you will get a link to the item that uh, I have listed. Uh, here, this is the uh, RH212 uh, ready to roll kit. Um, RH just stands for rear hub. It's the 212 motor from Nine Continents. It's, uh, it's a good motor. Um, it's the only motor right now that has the solid axle, which you need for the the top end force three conversion. Uh, the other one, actually the one that I have on my original build was the Crystallite uh, H uh, motor. That one is no longer available in the solid axle. It only has a through axle, which is no longer compatible with the force three. So the ready to roll kit is great because uh, first of all, it has most of the components that you need all on one page. They also build and program the cycle analyst and the controller for, for the motor in the kit. So you don't have to worry about programming it yourself, which um, does, you know, requires some figuring out. They have manuals for everything, but, you know, as you can maybe tell from this website, if you've tried exploring it, it's, it's not the most user friendly. Um, yeah, it's for, for DIY enthusiasts that are not too worried about getting their arms dirty. Um, so their hands dirty. So, um, so yeah. So let's let's go through all the options that I would uh, spe or I sp I actually just spec'd out a, a bike that we're building for uh, one of the riders. So so I should also mention at the beginning um, we are hoping to start this get one help two uh, program. And what that means is we uh, will offer to help you figure out what to buy for your bike. Uh, we will, you know, show our bike as a, as a demo. You could, you know, come over anytime and and check it out and see what you like, what you don't like. Uh, we're going to have these videos that we can point you to. Hopefully, there's going to be an online forum where people can discuss and ask questions. And the hope is, is that, you know, we'll go the extra mile for you, help you build your bike. If you and exchange can go the extra mile for two more people. And uh, we'll hopefully have a little section on the on the website with a map. You can click on the different areas and hopefully there's somebody close to you. Um, you could check out the bike and hopefully this, this, this kind of becomes a pyramid scheme that 
you know, maybe takes over the world in some way, hopefully a good way. Um, yeah, so, so, so yeah, so let's get into it. Um, uh, so, uh, okay, so to, conf to configure the RH212, first you're gonna have to select a winding option. I use the standard. Uh, fast is for going faster speeds. I think the standard maxes out with a 26 inch wheel um, somewhere around 30 miles per hour, which is plenty fast on a hand cycle. I don't think you want to go much faster than that. Uh, you can go faster if you're going down a hill. It's going to start um, regen braking above, above roughly that speed. But uh, hopefully uh, 30 miles an hour is fast enough for you. But yeah, you could select fast if you want. Uh, I think there's also slightly higher torque with the slower winding, which is a benefit. Um, the next... Uh, uh, the, the cassette, uh, we're going to move the cassette from the wheel that's already on the hand cycle to the, uh, to the one that, uh, to this wheel. Uh, it would be a 10 speed cassette, but we don't need to select that since we already have it. Uh, definitely ask for a wheel build. 60 bucks is a great price. I think you're, I don't know, the local bike shop in San Jose charges about 200 to build a wheel. So 60 is definitely a good price. Um, I like to go for the black. I, I feel like the black spokes look better. Uh, it's worth the extra 10 bucks. Uh, for the rim, I uh, go with this um, Zac 19 rim 26. Uh, this is a narrower rim, but it allows you to get something called a Tannis tire. Uh, that's actually something that I um, don't have in my spreadsheet. Uh, actually, I could add that right now. The Tannis tire is nice in that it's a solid uh, tire. It's not going to go flat. Um, uh, it's, uh, let's see, 1.75. I think it's the razor blade. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I went to it so easily before. Uh, yeah, times 26. That's the problem. So yeah, the razor blade, 26 times 1.75. This is a solid tire. It's, it doesn't have any air. So you don't ever have to worry about getting a flat. And uh, to be honest, when you, when you look at this uh, wheel that I have here, uh, it has a torque arm that's attached with hose clamps. Uh, it has this massive bolt, which you need a special socket wrench to get off of. You're not going to be able to take this wheel off on the road. Uh, I've been fortunate enough. I have these Schwalb Marathon Plus tires. These are some of the most you know, well-regarded tires in terms of puncture protection. They might not be the lightest, but that's not the optimization we care about here. Um, this tire is, um, hasn't had a flat um, since I got it two years ago. So it's worked out for me. Uh, but if you really want something bulletproof, I would recommend this razor blade. Um, to, to be able to use this razor blade, you will also need to get a special um, uh, bike tire lever. Um, actually, I think I have that linked in here. Um, I do remember adding it, yeah, right at the bottom here. Uh, those things are really hard to put on. So hopefully with one of these, it makes it easier. Um, I haven't done this myself, but uh, the Tannis tire might be a good, good option to look into. If, if the Tannis tire isn't what you want, I've also built a wheel with this Alex rim. Uh, it's not available right now, but that's a decent, decent rim as well. It's a little bit fatter. If you want to ride with like a bigger mountain bike tire, that might be a good option. Uh, but the Tannis, I think, is a really good option if you could get that tire put on. I have heard if you leave the tire outside in the sun to heat up for a couple hours, it becomes a lot more stretchy. So that's something else that maybe we, we, we should have tried. We, we tried and failed to install one uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, so the disc rotor, I, I, you could just reuse the disc rotor that comes with the bike. So I put not, none on that one. Uh, battery choice, I like to run at 48 volts. Um, this 19 amp hour battery should be sufficient to get you maybe 60 miles or so. Um, I did purchase one, this, this 20 amp hour 52 volt, that's even bigger. Uh, that's a massive, that's a beast. It's a really big battery. I, I don't know, maybe you can get 70 miles on it. I don't think it's worth the extra premium. The 48 uh, volt should be plenty. Um, uh, the triple bob is necessary. This is for mounting the battery to your rear axle. Uh, for the charger, I like to get the satiator. It is definitely the most expensive, but it's also a really good um, piece of equipment. Uh, it can charge at 7 amps, 
compared to 40, uh, two amps for the, this other cheaper uh, charger. At seven amps, you're gonna charge your battery at you know, three and a half times the speed, uh, much faster. Talk about less than three hours versus 10 hours for a full charge. And you could also set it to charge only up to 85%. Batteries degrade every time you charge them. And if you're charging them all the way up, they're gonna degrade faster. So I'd recommend using a satiator and unless you're going on a super long ride, just go to 85%. For the controller, I use the Base Runner L10. Uh, this is nice as it actually fits into the battery, um, the battery mount. So, so instead of having a wire stick out, you're gonna have a, a few wires stick out, but those are gonna be wires coming out of this uh, controller. And uh, it's one less thing to connect. Um, it's one less thing to go wrong. Um, I, I like this design. On my original build, I had this Grin Finion 48 volt 25 amp. Uh, it's, it's not a bad controller. Uh, one other benefit of this base runner is it can get up to 70 amps versus 25, so about twice the current. This means that not only do you get twice the acceleration, but that also means that you can get twice the regen braking, and that's where I think it matters a lot. Um, I, you know, I, wear about, I, I weigh about 200 pounds, and uh, uh, at my weight, I, uh, I can't maintain my downhill speed at, I don't know, grades above eight degrees um, uh, going down the hill. So with this uh, higher base runner L10, I think you'll have uh, more braking power, um, which, which is a benefit. Um, if you, uh, I should mention the batteries at uh, ebikes.ca are fairly expensive. You can get, uh, I think, a similarly, you know, similar capacity battery on Amazon for about half the price, maybe four or 500 bucks. Um, that is another option you could take. I would then pair that with probably um, the Phase Runner. It's out of stock right now. The Phase Runner L10 can, I think, even handle more amps. Um, uh, but then you're going to have to, again, mount it somewhere else. Um, it, it's not that much worse of a build, uh, but the, yeah, if I were, if the, the bike we just were, were, were building as the first example of the Get One Help To program uh, for one of the riders, uh, we, we chose the base runner, and I think that's a good option. Uh, for mounting, definitely choose handlebar clamp. Uh, the other clamp doesn't work at all with the, the, the Force 3, so make sure it's handlebar clamp. Um, Throttle, we're gonna buy a separate throttle with a longer cable. We need one with a longer cable to, to, so we could route it to the handle. If you want the throttle to be on the handle, um, we need a longer cable. Uh, pedal sensor, I like the 12 pole chain ring mounted pedal sensor. Uh, this one is really nice for a couple reasons. One is it's completely out of the way. On the non-drive side of the crank, it would kind of be in the way if you wanted to put your arm on that part of the bike. Uh, so having the sensor on the other, on, on, by the chain ring is nice. It's completely out of the way. Uh, this one also is nice as it breaks into two pieces. So you don't actually have to remove your chain rings to install the pedal assist sensor. That's a, that's a huge benefit. Um, you can do it. It's, it's just a bit of a pain to remove the bottom bracket of off. Um, but, but I'd recommend getting the 12 pole pedal assist sensor. Uh, you definitely need a torque arm. Uh, this is a powerful build. It's maybe 1,500 watts. It's, it's way more than uh, the strongest cyclist can put through his, um, uh, uh, you know, put through his bike. So if you do not get a torque arm, there's a strong risk of the, uh, the axle flat spinning out inside of your dropouts, and that will break your frame. Um, so I would recommend having a torque arm and attaching it with these hose clamps. Uh, I actually... So for my builds, I've used this tripwire push e-brake sensor. If you want to get everything from Grin, this is not a bad option. Uh, I have um, uh, the, the, the bike that we're building right now. Uh, this is the, the sensor that I put in. But there's, there's a different sensor that I recently found through the uh, low-cost bike that we're also building. Um, that one's, you know, closer to $1,000 versus $3,000. <laughs> Uh, or maybe a thousand versus two thousand, I should say, uh, to be fair, maybe twenty five hundred, yeah. Because um, some of the things like the Rojo cushion, you're going to want anyway. Um, but this sensor right here is uh, is really cool. It attaches 
Um, you can actually attach it on the disc brake side. This is, this is why I like it so much. Uh, yeah, you could see here, it could attach on the disc brake side. And the benefit there is, and that's, that's what I do with this, this, um, with this, this e-brake, uh, lever, lever sensor. You can also attach it on the, the disc brake side. It's just, it's not designed for that. Uh, plus it's a little bit more expensive. So I, I'd probably recommend, and I have it in the spreadsheet here, this disc brake sensor right here. I'd recommend going with that. Uh, note that might be different from the build that we're going to have a video for. Uh, otherwise, just get the tripwire push. And uh, for, for the Staterate injection, definitely get that. This is very important for the cooling of the motor. Uh, without the Staterate, the motor will overheat much quicker. Um, and uh, that's a big problem, especially if you're going up hills for a longer period of time. The motors will overheat, so the Staterate is, is absolutely key. Um, so if you don't include this e-brake sensor, I think the total price is 2031 41, which is that's the price that we have in the spreadsheets. Um, oh, I should definitely mention this is super important. Uh, ask Grin for an extra small washer. Uh, when we were building our bike, um, uh, it did not have enough of these uh, washers on the bottom here. This is super important because otherwise, without this, this 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 extra washer, the cassette the 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 cassette will rub against the frame and you won't be able to pedal at all. Uh, we ended up having to grind down this bigger washer on my belt sander into something similarly sized. You could just ask Grin to give you one more of these small washers and I'm sure you're gonna throw it in for free. Uh, just make sure to do that. Uh, as I mentioned, you need to get a longer uh, throttle lever. Um, this is the 140 centimeter one. Um, you can verify that the one you clicked on is correct because that's the link I gave you, but also in the additional information, it's 140 centimeters. Uh, you need that to be able to route all the way from the handle of the hand cycle to the cycle analyst. Um, since the battery and the controller are now on the back of the bike and the computer is on the front, you're going to need two of these extension cables. This nine pin, nine pin base runner uh, cable is what connects the cycle analyst to the base runner. You're going to need two of these extensions uh, to be able to route to, um, to uh, the computer. Similarly, you're going to need two of these L10 connections because you're going to be routing a wire all the way from the back of your hand cycle to the motor. I think the kit itself comes with one of these, so maybe you don't need to get two. Uh, maybe email them and ask and ask if it comes with a one meter long L10 extension. If it doesn't, just add two. Um, the three position switch. This is very useful for changing the settings very quickly. So the way I use it on my build is I like to use the three position switch to change the top speed. So if I'm going down, uh, 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 if I'm just going on flat roads and I want to go balls out, I mean, I usually, yeah, I bike faster. I want to get places. I'm going 25 miles an hour. That's my top speed on setting number three. Setting number two, I set the top speed to 14 miles an hour. This is very useful for going down paved roads, somewhere where you know you have good traction, but you don't want to go too fast because some of the turns are pretty sharp. And then one is, I, I have it set to six miles an hour. I use it for going down uh, gravel roads that are, you know, slippery, et cetera. But the three position switch is, is, is useful for, um, uh, for changing one of the settings really quickly. Uh, this next line is that disc brake sensor that I mentioned. It's, it's pretty cool. Basically the, the brake cable line goes through the sensor and it will grip onto the, the, the brake line. And as the brake line, gets pulled with the brake lever, it, uh, it basically turns off your, your motor. That's the purpose of this, this e-bike brake sensor is basically you don't want the motor going and fighting if you're trying to brake. Um, so that's actually, you know, an important sensor. Uh, I should mention actually, you know, uh, now that I mentioned the, the disc brake sensor, I actually use a motorcycle on off switch as a secondary e-brake uh, cutoff sensor, uh, not sensor, but just I, I connect it as if it's an e-brake cutoff sensor. You can just connect this to a, a simple four pin JST connector and then plug it into um, plug it into the e-brake sensor input. Uh, come to think of it, 
that might be one issue with this 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 e-bike sensor this this guy right here uh, has only one plug while the e-brake sensor that you have in um, uh, uh, e-brake this push sensor has two connections one for kind of daisy changing daisy chaining uh, multiple um, yeah, this tripwire push, uh, the connection on it, if we could see it, yeah, the connection, as you could see, one plugs into the cycle analyst and you could see it's, all it is is just two pins and they're either shorted or not. Um, and then the other one can plug into the, the, um, the other end can plug into, let's say the on off switch. So if you want an on off switch, you might need to get the tripwire push in the kit. Um, otherwise you might have to create your own um, daisy chain somehow, uh, which is probably not too hard, um, but that's something to consider. Um, uh, so yeah, so that, that, that kind of completes the electronics section of, of the parts. Um, and now we're going to get into, you know, wheels, uh, and some things to kind of put everything together. So I like to have tires that are dependable. Uh, you don't want to really have breakdowns on the road. It's not easy to change a flat on a hand cycle. I mean, the, the, the rear tires are pretty easy, but you still have to get off the bike, um, which, you know, isn't the, 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 the greatest experience in terms of, you know, you have to have something soft to land on, hopefully, for skin issues. I like these Marathon Plus tires. They're designed for city uh, riding where there's lots of debris on the ground, et cetera. So these are good tires. Definitely put two of these on the back wheels. On the front, the Tannis is a good option. The Tannis is probably going to be your best bet if you want something foolproof. Um, I've had my my Marathon Plus for for two years now, and and you know well over probably three thousand miles. It hasn't had a single flat yet. Um, so so th this this could be a good option, but if if you really want something foolproof, the Tannis is probably the best one. Uh, there's some things that you should get for making all the wire routing look pretty. Um, for one, I, I like to use this quarter inch sleeve. Um, I, I route my throttle with, with the sleeve uh, attached to the brake cable line, and then I zip tie it together. It, it looks pretty good. Um, actually, my, my latest build has that. The first one did not. Uh, this one looks better. Um, I like to have this spring here. Uh, I got, got it at Home Depot. Um, I use it for uh, making sure that the wire doesn't, um, you can see it better here. Uh, uh, it, it prevents the wire from, or from, I guess the brake cable from, it, it's a common breaking point on these top end Force 3s. Um, uh, especially now that the brake line is connected to the, the throttle, cap, throttle uh, wire. It's a little bit of extra weight, so it's a little bit more mass, just pushing forward every single time you pedal. Adding this spring should hopefully, or at least on my bike, it has extended the longevity of, of, of both the brake cable, uh, but as well as the, as the throttle uh, wire. Um, and then I use this little hose clamp to hold the, the, the spring to the bike. And then um, I also, I should have probably put this at the top, uh, I'll, I'll move this to the top here. Um, the wire route kit from, uh, from ebike.ca is really useful. It has a bunch of zip ties, and then it has these Velcro sleeves, which are great for taking all this, the spare wire that you have and, and uh, bunching it up so it's not flopping all over the place as you bike. So I, I definitely recommend getting this wire kit. Uh, then a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. Uh, I like to have a lower back cushion. So my bikes have that curved back seat. Um, I don't know if you could see it anywhere here. Yeah, you could see the curved back seat and you can see the back cushion right here on the bottom. It just makes the ride a lot more comfortable for me. So I put that in there. Um, uh, the bar end, this is what I use for connecting or mounting the on off switch for mounting. Um, you can see the bar end here. I guess nothing is attached to it at this point, but um, yeah, here you could see the on off switch is mounted to it as well as um, the three button switch and the auxiliary input for the computer. I mount all of it on that bar end. 
So I have that bar in for you right here, at least the one I used. Um, the Garmin is really nice. This is uh, rear light, which you know I'd recommend having a rear light for sure. The other benefit of this light is it actually has a radar on it. So it connects to your, um, your phone and your phone will alert you if there is uh, a car approaching. Um, and it actually has different kinds of beeps depending on how fast it's approaching. Uh, I think it's, it's a great piece of safety gear. Um, and then finally, this Rojo cushion. I strongly recommend riding on a Rojo, uh, especially if you're going to start going on longer rides. You don't want to have any skin issues. I, I actually have uh, weak skin on my, on my, my right ischial. Um, I've had a pressure ulcer two years ago. I was three months of bed rest. It still hasn't healed two years later. In fact, I'm on semi bed rest right now. Uh, making, that's why I'm making this video. I have a little bit of extra time. Uh, it's just, it's really weak skin that, you know, you do anything wrong, you transfer bad, it, it opens up. Um, I've been on the Rojo and it hasn't caused any issue. I've never had an issue from biking. Uh, and that's because I have that four inch Rojo. Um, then you need some bike parts. This is a bike bag. Uh, it's a pretty cheap bike bag, 11 bucks. It fits well on the, the back of the Force 3. These three mounts um, work pretty well for me. I, I, I recommend... Uh, having these CO2 cartridges versus a pump. Uh, these, uh, you know, they inflate the tire instantly. Uh, I, I recommend uh, having slime. I, I don't know if I mentioned that, but the slime tubes are very useful. Slime will automatically seal any punctures in the tube. Um, uh, uh, and, and it works best if you can inflate the tire really fast, because what happens is when you inflate the tire uh, or the tube really fast, it pushes it against the the tire and there's there's just that much less space for air to come out so the slime will um will will start working and coagulating better if you inflate it fast so i i recommend this the co2 tire inflator um and then you know always have a patch kit just in case you never know it might not work if it doesn't work well then you're gonna have to get off your bike and you know find some soft grass or something and hopefully get it get it patched up um you will need some tools. Uh, so there are a couple key tools at uh, ebikes.ca that you will need. So um, you definitely need to have something to remove the cassette from your current wheel. Uh, the cassette tool that I got off of Amazon did not have, uh, the opening was actually, I think, 11 millimeters. It wasn't big enough to slip over the 14 millimeter axle on, on that big hub motor. So, so the tool from ebikes.ca should be better for that. I'd recommend that. I actually have to drill mine out to make it bigger, which wasn't that easy. Um, you definitely need a multi-tool. So you're not gonna put this bike together without having some kind of set of Allen keys. This guy will have all, you know, all the Allen keys that you will need, plus it has this T-star bit, which you need for uh, moving the, uh, the disc brake uh, rotor, and, uh, and the Phillips head is also, I think you need it for, for removing one of the, the, the parking brake uh, shifter, I think. Uh, if you end up going with, uh, you know, there are other types of pedal assist sensors um, and there are actual torque sensors, which will also measure how much torque you're putting into the crank, which I, I have one. It's OK. I think the pedal assist sensor is totally enough. Uh, but if, if you want to swap out the, the, the cassette, I mean, the, the cranks um, and, and add uh, uh, you know, changing to the torque sensor is quite a bit because, uh, first of all, the the one the e by the the Force Three has uh, Shimano Octolink um, cranks, which you know you, now you got to have to replace. Um, uh, 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 you're gonna have to make sure that you can replace the chain rings. I think um, uh, the cranks. It, it's a bit of a project, but but if you want to do that, this is the the bottom bracket tool that you might need. Um, if you're going to remove your poly, your bottom bracket, I recommend you use some poly lube to uh, make sure that you can re remove the bottom bracket in the future. Um, if you're going to use this on off switch, you're going to need to get this JST uh, crimper. Uh, that's for attaching the on off switch to, um, to the cycle analyst and it uses this four pin uh, male, uh, actually I'm, yeah, sorry, female. Yeah, it's going to be the four pin female 
connector for the e-brake, I think. Um, and then, yeah, if, if you're gonna replace, uh, if you want to get rid of the crank and you know put a different kind of pedal assist sensor or a torque sensor, you're gonna need a crank puller. Uh, make sure it's a crank puller that's uh, compatible with the Octolink system, because that's what you have. You have an Octolink system. And remember, the non-drive side is right-handed thread. The drive side, meaning the side with the crank wheels, is left-handed thread. So um uh yeah uh, remember that if you're going to be using the bottom bracket tool and then the final link here i have is the uh the tool for um getting those stubborn tannis tires on so this would be the useful tool that you would need if you want to get the tannis tires and uh yeah that's about it i mean if you live in california it's about 300 dollars in tax maybe 120 dollars in shipping that's mainly for the motor kit it's shipping from canada so you got to pay for international shipping and uh yeah that about sums it up uh so yeah this this bike is you know it served me really well um i've gone to some pretty amazing places with it uh it's it's a it's a it's a it's a solid build um it's you know i'd say that the the, the, the mid-tier build we have the all-wheel drive bike and that's like a whole you know whole nother level you're gonna have you know two motors two batteries two controllers uh it's it's definitely more expensive it requires some custom machine parts which is also complicated uh so this is probably the best bike that you know somebody could build without without too much uh, mechanical expertise um there is a much less much more less expensive bike uh the befang 750 that one's about a thousand bucks um that doesn't include the rojo cushion and all that stuff i have to add that in here but um uh, for about a thousand bucks, as opposed to probably close to twenty five hundred, for you know, like if you add up all of these uh, costs and then um, some of the tools that you need, um, maybe half the price. Let's call it half the price. You can, you can get this. Uh, they sell these uh, kits on uh, AliExpress. Um, you don't get regen braking with this, so you're definitely sacrificing something. You don't get regen braking. You're not going to have as much battery range. And uh, it's, it's, I think, going to be a less robust uh, build. Uh, these are geared motors, so they have actual physical gears versus the, the RH212 is a direct drive motor. It, uh, it doesn't have any gears. It's just literally magnets. And uh, yeah, this is just magnets and uh, stators. Um, that's it. It's just wires and, and, and magnets. So, so um, it's going to be, th this, is, this is a pretty solid build. I think it's something that should at least last, hopefully at least it lasted me two years. Um, and uh, yeah, feel free to reach out, you know, check us out at ablebody.org. We'll have a discussion forum and uh, yeah, our mission is to, you know, help make this, this technology as, as accessible as possible. I should mention that, you know, you know, this bike is expensive, $3,400. If you compare this to the least expensive e-assist hand cycle, I think right now is about $9,000 online. So it's already a fraction of the price. And this is way better than any of those. There's like this Freedom Rider electric assist bike. This one is, is significantly better. Um, and, and, uh, the, the regenerative braking, I have to say, is a total game changer if you want to go up into the hills. Um, it's, 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 it's a blast to ride. So yeah, good luck with everything and uh, let me know how it goes.